I see his final down there along the sidelines. I couldn't tell whether or not he got out of bounds, but he did not. The Tigers can't block the up front man. They're putting the pressure on Woody, only rushing three men. Woody's having to sidestep him. Well, if they're only rushing three and he's forced to sidestep, somebody's not doing a very good job of blocking them. That's my point exactly. If the Tigers are forced here to keep the balls in bounds, keep the ball in bounds, either a sack or a pass play, clock's going to run out on them. They have to use the sidelines at this point. So it's going to be third down 12, but that's not the important thing right now. The important thing is they're down one with only 19 ticks left on the clock. And they must get at least in the field goal range for an opportunity to win this thing. And the prospects of that don't look good at this stage. No, they don't. The Tigers have not gone, been successful at all today going vertical, and that's what they have to do, as you mentioned. Young they got probably left. two plays. Young blood left, Gardner to the right. Rolling left, looking to throw deep down the middle. Gardner's there, and it is caught inside the tent. And there it is. If you get it to Gardner, he will catch it. Exactly. 50 Woody. yards on the play. I think Woody threw that ball as far as he could, half roll to the left. I thought Gardner got out of bounds, but he did not. Well, all he got to do is kill the ball now. I thought Garner got away from a little push off there toward the end. Oh, yeah. I agree with you, Ev. So we'll take it. Woody. Look at Rod. Right. Big time players make big plays in big games. Can't say it enough. Sets well, up for an opportunity for the, the win. Now. Oh, my. I'm now, shaking down here, guys. I'm telling you the truth. Can, can Aaron Hunt make a three on the day? Ev, if you're not standing up up there, I can't believe it. You gotta believe down here, baby. Aaron Hunt will try a field goal that could win the game, and South Carolina's gonna try and freeze him with a timeout. And literally you freeze him. Rod, the you mentioned Rod Gardner. You thought made a history to look at it here now. You thought he got away with a little bit of a push off, but you know we've seen him do that over and over throughout the course of the season. Another thing, Mike, or rather, yeah, Mike. Uh, yeah, that's pretty close. Yeah, pretty close. But you know, I have been watching in other games when you have outstanding players and they make a little bit of contact. Usually they don't draw a flag. No, they don't. Just like that. No, they don't. But the thing that surprised me about that today, Jim, is the fact that there's already been three offensive pass interference calls made in this ball game with big time players in it. Yeah, that's but, point but Gardner certainly made a huge play for the Tigers, showing, stepping up, showing his leadership there. And Woody, what, what really froze what made that play happen, Woody went for the half roll to the left side. The free second plane, deep, and he's concentrating on Rod Gardner. But by Woody going to his left originally, the free safety has to go to that side of the football field, and it gave Gardner time to get back behind his defender on the right side, and Woody just throws it back across the grain as far as he can, and Gardner makes the play. Aaron Hunt, Ash Mark Wright, 15-yard line, a 25-yard effort with seven seconds remaining in the game. Jeff's got the hold. It all comes down to this. Awaiting the snap. The spot, the kick. It is up and it is good. And I want to tell you something, folks. I may right now, in my mind, Aaron Hunt earned that scholarship <laughs> that he received and this some. afternoon. And then some. Three field goals for Hunt. And I'm going to tell you something. He was not lethargic. He booted that baby. He, he did this not lie. Lie. Oh, that This side line, those people crying, those people falling on everybody, hugging. This is a great place. 60 yards in seven plays, 50 of them on one fight. He thought I was crazy Gardner. about saying not to rule the Tigers out. That's right. I told you, hey, this offense sets up. And like you said, Mike. Finding Gardner on that 50-yard play, the key. But believe me when I say Aaron Hunt had himself the burden on his back. And also, yeah. sir, a freshman kicker yeah. who had been chastised from by many with their fans. And they're... Their chastising doesn't count, really, because 
those who speak probably never felt pressure on an athletic field in their life. So. That's true. But Jim, I'd ask you, when the, the series started, what was the longest field goal the Tigers had kicked this season? Actually, the longest field goal they had kicked was tonight. 30, 30, 30, 31, 35 yards, 500. on that one, right? Is that 35? That's 15. I don't know. So big night for Hunt all the way around. Yeah, I thought it was 35, really. Okay. We don't know. All we know is that there's three ticks left on the clock, and the Tigers aren't out of it yet. I'm sure the Tigers were thinking maybe that little throw back here, Jim, we talked about earlier in the ball yeah. game. The one that they pulled off in 94. Gamecocks obviously can throw the ball back if it's a lateral. Our field judge actually had to back up South Carolina's players. They crossed the 45. That's the territory there, dude. Well, let's see what Lazar is going to do here. Then that first half, he kicked it bouncing along. They fell on it. He boots it again like that. And then it's going to be picked up. Now it's all in tackling this man right here. And they got it. The ball is here. That's it, baby. Flag comes down. Well, I don't think that flag is significant, although the official standing down here marking the play. Game is over. Yeah. The Tigers have won it. Do you think people are going to remember this one right here? Woo. Well, they said it was dull and boring to a degree. Yeah. Until the end, huh? Up until the last four minutes, it was a boring game. They were calling it a classic before the kick kickoff even happened, and it definitely turned out to be a classic. Well, I'm going to tell you something. That's the, you know, I thought the comeback in Columbia in 77 was great. But uh, the Tigers had about a minute 48 to go, uh, go in that game, I think, when they got to come back as a pass from Fuller to Butler to wrap up a victory. But you know there's a little significance tied into that. The Tigers, on that date in 1977, knew they were going to the Gator Bowl. And they were awaiting the official invitation in the locker room after the game. And suddenly, after leading 24-0 at halftime, they trailed 27-24 with a little over a minute 40 to go. And that was when Fuller found Butler, and the winning touchdown was scored, and it made for a happy post-game. And that was repeated in a little different manner here tonight, but the Gator Bowl was still the goal. And I'll tell you how important this is in more ways than just winning over your big rival. Winning here tonight snaps a two-game losing streak and sends the Tigers into the bowl with a victory as opposed to three games lost in a row. Oh, there's no question, Jim, but it's huge, the victory tonight, and that comeback there with 51 seconds left on the clock, moving the ball down the field, 70 yards, or almost 70, to get the winning field goal, and it does end things, certainly on a positive note, and these seniors, you can't say enough about these seniors, especially Rod Gardner, their last game in all orange here as a Tiger in Death Valley gave these fans something to remember. 16-14, Tigers win it. We'll be back. <laughs>